hello everyone. My name is Nerjana. I am going to present today a study that I did in uh, for a thesis for my uh, master in sustainability and clim uh, urban climate in uh, Glasgow uh, Caledonian University. So. Uh, the theme is the assessment and ad uh, adaptation of urban, urban culture heritage assets as tourist destination towards the impact of urban heat island. So my thesis uh, treats one of the most um, acknowledged uh, threats of nowadays, which is climate change. And if we focus on the context of Europe, uh, we can see that uh, the, there is a huge uh, percentage of dwellings that are pre-1919. So uh, they are part of historical centers and uh, it, uh, they are inside cities. And the, so climate change is likely to alter the degradation of cultural heritage in different ways. But uh, also, these historical urban areas are also affected by uh, urbanization and uh, urban, plan urban planning dynamics. And till now, uh, they have been treated as they are not part of urban planning, or they are unique or uh, monuments that only only are part of cultural heritage, they are not part of the city, but in fact, they are part of urban development and we uh, we nowadays want to integrate them for a sustainable future. Uh, so for my aim and objective, uh, objectives of my thesis, I was uh, trying to experiment with this sustainable and climate sensitive solution to adapt these urban uh, cultural heritage sites in Edinburgh uh, that are vulnerable to climate change and urban dynamics, while considering also the UNESCO's uh, conversation, uh, conservation and preservation guidelines. My objectives were to explore the urban culture heritage sensitiveness, thresholds and vulnerabilities in the city of Edinburgh to uh, likely climatic scenarios that in the future and uh, also developing a, a local climate zone classification for the city of Edinburgh focusing on culture heritage. Another aspect that I uh, treated as an objective in my thesis was um, how urban heat island uh, affects the city and the culture assets as a touristic as, as a tourist uh, a touristic destination and how it's the impact of the outdoor thermal comfort to tourists. So what is urban heat uh, island? It is the difference, the fluctuation of temperature between the urban areas and rural area areas. And the evaluation of this magnitude depends on the combination of four characteristics, technological, morphological, anthropogenic, and weather or climate parameters. And local climate zone, it is a research and a framework that helps uh, to um, Value, assess the magnitude of uh, urban heat island and compare the, the, uh, it, compare the urban areas to the rural as areas, but also try to uh, make a difference between different zones in the cities. Uh, so, OK, in uh, okay uh, develop uh, the local climate zone with 17 uh, different types of zones, which are 10 are build types and uh, uh, seven are uh, land cover types. Uh, nowadays, uh, there are two approaches how to assess the local climate zoning, which is remote sensing and GIS. Compared to GIS, the remote sensing, it's um, less, uh, 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 it's low cost, because uh, uh, there is a platform called UDAP that uh, uh, 
has a, a precise workflow and it, it's open source that uh, uh, we can create the local climate zoning of a city, of an area, but the protocol is very strict. So it's not very adaptable for uh, uh, historic towns, which uh, this workflow, it's, it's more adaptable for uh, cities like in US, like uh, New York or um, Chicago, which were uh, usually developed with in, in big blocks and uh, cannot be used in uh, cases like Edinburgh, for example. So in my research, I used the GIS approach because it helps me, it's more flexible, even though it requires more high resolution data and not only primary data, but also secondary data. Sometimes also uh, field, like uh, uh, data collected from the field. And uh, uh, to uh, in the GIS approach, uh, we have to use uh, 10 parameters that uh, are sky view factor, aspect ratio, building surface fraction, impervious surface fraction, pervious for, uh, surface fraction, and height of uh, roughness elements, and terrain roughness, and uh, all the, the seven that I mentioned are morphological parameters, while the other one, uh, surface uh, uh, albedo anthropology, Pogenic heat output are very are, are a, a little bit um, dif difficult to calculate, so they are not considered in my study. Um, regarding regarding the outdoor therm thermal comfort, uh, we we can say that urban forms strongly influence the microclimate in a city or in an area with different conditions uh, and um, influence also thermal conditions. So uh, the microclimate and the use of outdoor spaces also affect the thermal comfort conditions. Uh, there are very various indices that uh, have been developed through the years and uh, evaluate the tourist uh, climate uh, appropriateness, like the uh, PMV, PET, MRT, but uh, the latest and most accepted from researchers is PET, uh, physiological equivalent temperature. And uh, why is this important? Uh, to offer a condition for tourists is vital for also Edinburgh, because uh, culture heritage creates a condition for the development of, uh, tur uh, of tourism and uh, can contribute to economy and employment to the city. So, uh, my study case, I want to start, why, why did I choose Edinburgh? So, uh, first of all, it's about the the rich culture, cultural landscape that Edinburgh has with a lot of assets, various assets spread throughout the city, but also with, the, uh, with um, two, uh, uh, one, one UNESCO um, site that it's properly, like it has a huge impact in the entire city, which is the old and the new town of Edinburgh. And um, so, um, Till now, the, this, the management of the World Heritage uh, Site is, is responsibility of the owners, but also it's overseen by uh, the City of e Edinburgh Council, the e uh, Edinburgh World Heritage. So um, another important uh, fact here is in 2019, the ratio between tourists and residents in Edinburgh reached four to one. And um, uh, what, is what is expected to happen in Edinburgh um, in the future? I have here some figures uh, regarding the, uh, the, the change in climate and temperature. So the conditions for the tourists will, will change in the future. How to prevent that if, if is Edinburgh ready to do that? 
my other reason is also uh, the importance and the impact that these sites have in the planning uh, system of the city. There are uh, these these areas uh, have uh, are treated through uh, various uh, legal documents that protect and consider these uh, these sites an important part of the city. And what is going to happen uh, in the future, in the nearest future, is the the project in the new town, a transformation of. Um, Edinburgh's new town that we will, um, it's the first, in fact, a project since uh, ever, ever done that uh, will have a huge impact by creating spaces and, and opportunities for events and um, will uh, like have a, a, a reconstruction in the, in the main, uh, main area and it will be uh, entirely pedestrian. So, uh, regarding my methodologies, uh, I have two methodologies. One is to assess the uh, local climate zone. Um, this is my workflow for uh, the GIS approach that I used. Um, I, had, I considered six param morphological parameters and uh, I had different uh, data sources. Uh, the one that I would like to mention here is the uh, land use and land cover map, which I got from Copernicus uh, land monitor uh, system um, from 2018, which is not in the UK grid. I had to adapt. In, it's the only, it's the only uh, layer that uh, was not uh, created originally in the UK um, uh, grid. The other one uh, I got from uh, Edina Digimap, an open source for students. Oh, um, they were mainly a vector, uh, in, in vector um, type, but I also uh, use the LiDAR data, uh, which uh, it, unfortunately it's not classified, so I had to do uh, a provisional classification by my own. And using uh, other, like uh, I classified the building through a layer that I had in vector. Um, so what resulted on it uh, in this action was that I have one important layer that I needed for my study was the vegetation layer to um, calculate one of the par parameters that it, it, it is the, the hardest to calculate, which is the sky view factor. And I did that with... Um, uh, a quantum GIS and an extension of UMAP uh, and um, to calculate uh, first the canopy of uh, the vegetation layer uh, um, I, I found difficulties in uh, this uh, stage because uh, the LiDAR data was not classified. The other uh, the building height, the road uh, network center line, I all, uh, all of them, I uh, got it from one data source, which is Edina, a Digimap. All after, after uh, calculating all these morphological uh, parameters, I uh, then um, classified uh, these, uh, combined, uh, co combined these uh, parameters with the uh, OK thresholds. And then I uh, aggregated with the uh, um, with the uh, uh, land uh, okay uh, you, uh, by uh, and I use the classifier uh, rule of if this is uh, accomplished then uh, this uh, then classify at, at, at this local climate zoning. Uh, category. This is uh, the my uh, my workflow for the outdoor thermal comfort, which I uh, I collected data on site, and uh, I used uh, MVMAT to simulate parameter uh, parameters of uh, temperature air temperature, uh, relative humidity, PET, uh, and uh, I. Uh, 
uh, did my simulation in three scenarios, and I, I took four uh, four receptors. One is uh, the first one is to show uh, the thermal comfort in the in an area which is supposed to have open activities. The uh, the receptor two and three show the difference. Uh, like uh, uh, are in the same uh, space, but they are in different corners of the building. So they, uh, uh, the uh, one is all the time in the sun, and the second one it's all the time in the shadow. And the, the receptor fourth uh, is um, is near the vegetation. Um, this is my uh, base scenario, which I uh, had to uh, adapt all the materials, and uh, I used uh, GIS to create the 3D modeling, then I imported to um, NVMet software. This is the second scenario, which is called the cool, uh, the cold, uh, cool scenario, uh, case, or the cold uh, scenario, which uh, uh, I adapted all the, the materials that the project uh, uh, it, implements and also I changed uh, the um, uh, properties of the materials of the existing building because as maintenance um, changes the albedo of the uh, of the um, materials and also I added uh, the uh, shading and elements that the project uh, suggest the, the the third scenario is the green case and uh, usually uh, they are uh, shrubs and um, hedges uh, and also I, I also propose some potted plants around the blocks which is not possible to plant trees um, so this is my uh, this is these are the uh, morphological parameters um, results um, and for each of the land use, I I, um, I, I wanted to present the frequency. Uh, these are only some of the land use categories because it's uh, it's impossible to show everything. But what I want to uh, say is that uh, in the in the new town. Uh, we have uh, the category of compact uh, com uh, compact urban areas, which are higher than eighty percent, and we see that the sky view factor there it's uh, closer to uh, zero, and the aspect ratio is uh, higher, which means there are narrow uh, roads, and the the building height is uh, around it goes till twenty four meters. Um, I did the uh, combination of the uh, orchid thresholds and uh, based on the mean, uh, mean, um, for example, mean height or mean parameters, uh, considering also the standard deviation of each um, parameter, and I assigned. Uh, I assigned to each of the classes of local climate zoning. As you can see, not everyone, uh, every uh, some classes would fit. A, some land use classes would fit uh, in more than one climate zone, and uh, only uh, four of them reached uh, reached uh, um, like fitting four parameters. And this is the final uh, local climate zone, uh, which uh, which I uh, and hi highlighted the World Heritage Site, but. There are some problems because still this uh, this fine resolution of 15 meters was not enough, and uh, the problem is with the land use uh, map. There is no land use that emphasizes the cultural heritage uh, sites, uh, not even considering them as a sector, but also like uh, there can be possibilities of uh, I introducing uh, land use that. Uh, consider the architectural or even um, the sh maybe how UNESCO, the Convention of 1972, uh, divides the culture assets. So this, these are some representation, my outputs from the uh, NVMED, and I want to focus in this part. Uh, sorry. So uh, uh, I want to say that in the new town, uh, only uh, the receptor. Okay. 
There, so the, there are problems in, in all the points. Uh, the, the project doesn't, uh, doesn't uh, provide a climate sensitive area. Only uh, in the shadow area, th th uh, most of the time the tourists will be comfortable. Uh, so I'm sorry, like uh, this is too long, so thank you. <laughs>